Hey, what's going on? Welcome to GC Talks. I got a great one for you. It's crazy because we already started talking. I had to pause him and say, hey, man, we we hey, we need to get this on camera. You know, some of the things that we're talking about, we want to make sure that, you know, we're passing along the information. Um, I have my good guy. We actually met on LinkedIn and we have been kind of conversing and trying to network and build together ever since. Um, Jonathan Carrington, you know, he is a therapist. And today I definitely wanted to talk about how, you know, mindfulness, how um, your mental, you know, helps you in your, your career development or hinders you in your career development mm -hmm. process. Um, I know that I've personally gone through some things, you know, where I had, you know, seek therapy and a therapist helped me um, kind of break through some of those things because I had a coach, right? And you start to learn like coaches, therapists, mentors are totally different. As a coach myself, a lot of times I have that question of, well, what's the difference between a mentor and a coach? So I'm pretty sure you get the question, what's the difference between a coach and, and a therapist, especially when it comes to, you know, issues that you may be going through, and especially if it kind of, you know, digs in kind of work related as well, too. But I wanted to right. welcome you and thank you for having this conversation um, with me today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me on. And it's good to, to chat with you. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation. So before we really dig into it, I always like to ask the question, how did you get into what it is that you do? Great question. Um, actually, this is my second career path. Um, before I was working in the nonprofit sector, um, I, I, I my bachelor's degree was in um, theater arts administration. So I at that time in my life, I was interested in the arts and entertainment and, you know, really trying to, you know, because I had a I had a history of like uh, a dance background, all that stuff. But that was in my childhood and that led me to college. And so, so this path came out of um, interest in, I was going through like uh, transitions in life with, you know, coming back home from, you know, having this career, this first career in nonprofits and in the arts and really wanting to um, make an impact in the world in a different way. And so I became a therapist because I really have always been interested in this like uh, deeper meanings of life and, you know, psychology and human behavior. And then I was also involved in a church, which kind of deepened that interest, you know, really like spirituality and faith and things like that. And um, that's what led me to go back to school and get my master's degree, because I really wanted to um, get another degree and shift in a direction where um, I wanted to help people, but I wanted to help people in a, in a completely different way than I was helping them in the past. And that's what led me to become a therapist. So, and then, you know, I have my own kind of thing, my own personal issues going on as well with family and other dynamics going on in my life. And I use that lived experience to, to apply to my um, continuing education to become a therapist. Okay, nice. Do you feel like that was definitely the fulfillment that you need, especially career-wise when you made that pivot? I think so. I think um, I think I should have been a therapist a long time ago. Um, I think that, you know, I early on in life, I was kind of a little lost, a little, little kind of like not, you know, I didn't really understand what my purpose was. I didn't, I mean, I knew that I really wanted to make a difference in the world because I went to college, but I didn't really know exactly what my life path or my life purpose truly was until I got into this profession, until I got into the mental health profession and, and psychology, where I was like, my mind was stimulated based on the education and information that I was getting. And I was, I was like reading and doing research and writing papers. And I was getting so immersed in it to the point where I was like, oh, this is, this is it for me. Like, this is the area I need to be in. Right. So, and I think, Oftentimes, many of us don't really know what our, you know, what it is that we want to do or, you know, what what type of uh, skills or qualifications that really make us to be um, the best candidates for certain roles. And for me, it was really about um, connecting what was what was already natural and organic for me, like intuitively, 
like authentically, like who am I really and what are some of the traits or um, characteristics that could be further enhanced? I already had like a, a, a sense of intuition and a sense of like problem solving and kind of <clears throat> really understanding things on a deeper level. And so I wanted to just enhance that. And, and this career path being a mental health professional has allowed me to explore and experiment and do all the things that I'm doing now. And and, it, and I feel, for me, it feels very uh, centering. It feels very uh, grounding for me. Okay. And in what yeah. area do you kind of more specifically specialize in? Sure. So <clears throat> I am, uh, so, so my title is I'm a licensed um, clinical professional counselor. Um, so my uh, specialty is trauma. So I'm a trained, I'm trained in trauma therapy, um, but I'm also cr trained in other disciplines as well. But most of the clients that I see have some degree of trauma in their history but they're also dealing with um, anxiety, depression, and uh, other other issues like codependency. Um, they may have some other issues with uh, stress, um, work-related stress, which we're, what we're about to talk about. Um, many of the clients are uh, dealing with issues of perfectionism, high achieve hyper-achievement, mm -hmm. <clears throat> procrastination, Excuse me. Um, and many of the issues that has led them to the career path that they're on, which is why they're seeking out therapy. So that's kind of the lane in which I'm working in right now. Okay. Okay. So, you know, now you kind of segueing into it, you know, especially seeing clients, right, that you've had and, and kind of dealt with. How do you see that? your mental health affects you when it comes to your career development? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's start, let's start with this. So <laughs> when you think about <laughs> um, occupation and your work, um, a lot of your career decision-making, a lot of what you understand about vocation and career does come just from my lens in terms of how, um, cause I'm also a psychodynamic and we can, it, psychoanalytic therapist, but that pretty much means that a lot of your um, experiences from childhood impacts the way that you, it informs how you make decisions in your career. It informs, how you deal with stress on the job. It informs the type of um, environments that you enter into. Um, it shapes your perception, your thoughts, your beliefs about the types of um, work environments that you, you are more attracted to. So depending on how you were brought up or you know, what you think about your mother, you think about your father, in terms of their relationship with work in the workplace and you know their sense of their philosophy around education and, and, and its intersection with work. I think that is really important information to understand and know to also better understand why you are experiencing what you're experiencing in the workplace today. So that, that parent-child relationship um, uh, as it pertains to work in the workplace. That that makes sense, right? Um, because it, it's funny. I <laughs> I had a client and uh, well have, and I'm talking to him about. I, I think you may need to, you know, seek out therapy because mm -hmm. we're having a conversation, and he's telling me how he lacks confidence, and so I'm mm -hmm. asking him the why. Mm -hmm. You know, well, where does that stem from? Why? And so mm -hmm. then he starts talking about his childhood and mm -hmm. how. He felt, you know, less than because of how he grew up and what he was told. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, that's trauma. That's internal trauma that you're going through. And you may need to kind of work those things out um, mm -hmm. as well to kind of help you un have that understanding and then help you kind of move forward, you know, because now you can come back to me and I can coach you and train you up 
you know, and give me right. some tools and techniques, but you need to really dig deep and uncover that trauma um, that you have. Um, I, I, and I think, I think you could, you'll probably second this. A, a lot of people have issues in the workplace because they have traumas that they don't even recognize um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that they really, really need to kind of work on. Can, do you have any examples or can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And, and I want to make sure that I kind of uh, talk about this in a way that is very informed. So basically for the listeners, workplace trauma, if you're experiencing workplace trauma, it really means that when you, if you're an employee and you're experiencing, um, it could be a one-time traumatic event. It could be a workplace accident. It could be ongoing stressful events, um, like unrealistic expectations around work or having an abusive boss or dealing with um, microaggressions, bullying, harassment, um, those type of issues in the workplace. So if you're, so if you're experiencing that, um, you know, I think some of the, some of the ongoing mental health issues, if you are, have experienced, uh, trauma in the workplace, may be this sense of like increased anxiety, um, increased depression, panic attacks, um, having challenges with, um, regulating or controlling your emotions, um, you can also have some physical health issues such as like exhaustion, hyper, you could be hyper vigilant or hyper aroused, like, or startled. Um, you can have sleep issues. You can have difficulty with um, relaxing, you know, you know, staying calm. Um, it can also be a decrease on your energy levels. It actually can um, cause some physical pain. Um, also, some other examples might be like, if you've experienced um, trauma in the workplace, you might have some flashbacks. An employee um, might feel like you're reliving or reenacting some of the traumas that you incurred between your relationship with your parents or mm. something may have happened to you in your childhood. The nervous system is acting like it's still happening, mm. even if the trauma has already passed, like it's, it's in the past. And so that can be really stressful and scary and draining to someone that's experiencing that. It can also be like examples if, um, you know, uh, abs absenteeism, you know, increase like people taking time off work, uh, which causes issues with attendance at work. For example, if, if you're experiencing, if you're an employee in the workplace and you're experiencing mental health and physical symptoms, you probably need to, you probably need to stay at home to take care of your health. Uh, because you're finding yourself being triggered at work. Um, maybe you had an interaction with a, a coworker or a, a boss or a manager. You get triggered by that. And then that leads to like you taking off work because you need to get some time or take some time for yourself um, because you're experiencing the stress at work. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it can also affect your... Um, confidence levels because even if you uh may have said something or maybe you let's say you received the pip or, or something like a performance and um or you, you're constantly getting criticized or judged based on your work performance that might be mimicking some of the criticisms and judgments that you receive from maybe your father who may have um came at you about your academics or like your homework and you're not you're not trying hard enough you need to make straight A's or you need to uh you're you're always kind of being like walking on eggshells like and that's the same experience you had when you were a child growing up just in terms of like academics or how you performed in school and stuff like that and so that could be coming up again in the workplace where your boss is doing the same thing to you, mm. you know? And so, yeah, so that might lead to like decreased levels of confidence. Uh, that might lead to like this sense of imposter syndrome. It's a term that's being thrown out there now, just like feeling inadequate, feeling not good enough because it's reminding you of things from your past. Um, burnout is another, uh, another issue, you know? you know, in terms of just people who are 
feeling the vicarious trauma of the working conditions or they're feeling trauma related to the industries that they're in. They might be in a high demand, high stressful, very competitive industry and they're experiencing burnout because they're constantly overworking and they're exhausted and tired. Um, they're constantly thinking about work. They're, they're, that's what uh, increases burnout. Um, and even just with just a sense of pressure that's being applied um, in terms of increasing your work performance, increasing your productivity, that leads to burnout. Um, so those are just some, those are some just examples. I mean, you can go into like substance use, people who are engaging in um, uh, substances, drugs and alcohol, you know, and sometimes with, you know, dealing with the traumas that they're experiencing in the workplace, they use substances to kind of numb out the pain or numb out the issues um, that are going on in their work environment. Um, but yeah, those are some of the, some, some examples. Um, what do you think about, what do you think about those? So I, I think that's great. I kind of, you know, you were saying something that really was kind of resonating with me, which basically seems like triggers, right? When you, when you talk mm -hmm. about, um, being triggered, I think that, and, and I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but maybe you've had a client like this where they've been a high performer. Um, mm -hmm. and something happened and they just, they lose interest, motivation to keep, you know, performing at the same level, um, that they were, and they just not feeling it at all. And, um, and they're trying to understand why did this subtle change happen? Um, and, and they can't, you know, they can't really understand and you, you know, you have to talk to them. But of course, like I said, I'm not a therapist, so <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't really know you know, the questions um, to ask uh, in that situation. So I'll ask you, um, you have someone, you know, coming to you and, and they basically, uh, you know, describe that situation or scenario of, you know, I've been a high performer, you know, for the last 10 years. Um, and I just don't know what's going on with me. Like, I just cannot get up. I can't, I can't rise to the occasion to perform at the same level that I was you know, over the last 10 years, um, what do I do? Yeah, let's, let's just kind of talk about the, I, I think it's also important to just make sure that we acknowledge and validate that that person, what that person is experiencing is very real. Um, Cause acknowledging and validating people's stories versus ignoring, which is what happens. There's a gaslighting that happens with some of these experiences. And so the first step is just to acknowledge that you are experiencing what you're experiencing and it's true. Um, the The other thing is also when you said trigger, what a trigger is, is it's, it's, it's a stimulus um, that elicits a reaction. Um, and when you're in the context of mental health or mental illness, you know, it's often something that brings on or worsens the symptoms that you are already experiencing. And it often happens with people who are in abusive workplaces or work environments, or they may be recovering from mental illness or self-harm addiction, any of these issues. And basically part of what we wanna do with this client is we wanna understand and identify and work to prevent the triggers um, because that can, that can be something that can help them to kind of navigate the situation um, in a way. So there's different types of triggers. There's like trauma triggers. You, you So we wanna also understand, helping the client understand, is this a trigger that's coming out of, you know, feelings based on something that may have happened to you in the past? Maybe, you know, um, does this, does this uh, individual remind you of, of someone? that was from your past, um, and in most cases it is, it could also be like um, external triggers, whether it be like sounds, sights, textures, symptoms, it could be any trigger. So we want to be able to understand, work to understand and be more curious about how to... Um, how to deal with these triggers that they come up in the workplace. How do we begin to um, learn to engage in difficult situations with a focus on 
maintaining this relationship with uh, this particular coworker, whether we want to um, speak to the, the person that is triggering us or activating us, we do that in therapy. We try to figure out what um, what what are some of our options. Um, but uh, we also want to be able to set some boundaries around because we want to make sure that with boundaries, we want to make sure that we're um, we're clear and we know what the expectations are, which adds a sense of like security and stability. But we also want to um, <clears throat> figure out some other strategies and ways to like cope that might work for this person in terms of coping with their triggers and helping them to relax. What are they doing to take care of themselves? Are there any self-care strategies that they're using? Um, but also like, okay, what is your safety plan? You know, so that you're not being triggered and re-triggered because um, having some type of understanding of like how to exit, how to remove yourself, how to detach. So you can know exactly what is going to happen in the event that you are triggered again. So, um, but yeah, it really, it really is about understanding, identifying and responding and reacting to the trigger um, in a way that is healthy versus unhealthy. Um, there is just so, there's so much that is going on that is not being said between mm -hmm. the interaction between an employee and their company. There's so much happening. Um, mm -hmm. This is why therapy exists to help people to kind of slow down and kind of speak about what is actually going on so that we we can figure out a solution to move forward. Wow. So, I mean, it's it's funny because you enlighten me because um, just listening to things you say, I can think of you know, situations or scenarios in the workplace where I'm like, oh, wow. And I, and I give you one. Um, when people don't like someone, never spoke to them, never mm -hmm. really came across them, just seen them, just seen, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. like, why? They, they haven't done anything to you. They haven't said anything to you. I, I right. just, it's just something about them I don't like. But, but you don't know them. And now thinking about that, something about their looks could be triggering um, and they mm -hmm. just don't know it, but they're projecting that on that person. And that person has not done anything to them at all, but so showed right. up. Um, <laughs> so, wow. Okay. And and that person could possibly um, be a, a, a trigger of a memory of a person that reminded them of someone or someone from outside of the workplace it could be their personality. It could be their attitude. It could be just the way that that other person is presenting themselves. It could be anything, you know. But I think it's important for us to understand. Okay, where? What is that? What is that about? Like being curious, understanding, like who, who or what was involved, where, when, why. Like what? What is it about this person that is triggering you to the point where it's causing you to? Um, be angry or be frustrated or be resentful or what is really going on within you um, versus looking at that other person and figuring out what's going on with them. Think about what's going on within you mm -hmm. so that you can figure out how to address whatever is coming up for you. Yeah, having that awareness. Okay, I don't like this person and I don't even know why. Right. It goes back to that why right. question, right? Um, yeah, why? But doing it so much with no judgment, right? Like we're right. not going to judge what's coming up. We're just going to be more observant. Like, what is it about? Why is it about this person? And do I need to set some limits and boundaries to mm -hmm. protect myself, right? When this person comes up, like, you know, how much time or how much energy am I giving to this person? You know, um, or am I limiting my engagement and my interaction? with right. this individual, right? And that could be, you know, someone, a supervisor, right? Uh, right. Someone that kind of has an impact on someone lower than them, having that same right. feeling and emotion and right. hindering them to getting to the next level. And it's absolutely nothing about their work, you know, right. their personality, none of that. It's solely they don't like them because of something, but they can't put their finger, you know, quote unquote, on it. 
So, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's yeah, man, that's awesome. You know what, man? We're gonna have to, we might have to make this kind of a series, a reoccurring thing. Uh, sure. We kind of talk and 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 dig deep into it because uh, I like this conversation and I think people need to hear it because mm-hmm. I think people don't really understand how their mental even affects them in the workplace. You know, a lot of times I think mm-hmm. people are starting to understand that, okay, my mental is affecting me overall, but they don't understand, like I'm being triggered in the workplace. You know, these issues are happening to me in the workplace, you know, as well. And we need to really unpack that and dig that. So I definitely want us to mm-hmm. continue this and, and go further. Um, let the people know, uh, you know, where they can find you. Yeah, you know, you can find me on, um, so my website is www.atone, A-T-O-N-E, dash therapy, T-H-E-R-A-P-Y.com. And you can go to that website. If you want to schedule um, 30 minutes, I offer a consultation. Let's hop on a call. Let's talk about what's going on. um, If that's something that you want to do. And then we could talk about what your options are. So I'm licensed to practice in Maryland, Virginia. Um, so I can take on Maryland residents and um, Virginia clients at this time. Um, I also offer coaching as well if you're not in those states. So just uh, go to the website and find me there. You can also find me on the social media channels. I have an Instagram account. My handle is uh, at one therapy. And uh and I'm also on LinkedIn. You can find me. My name is Jonathan Carrington. I do write a lot of content about um, mental health in the workplace. So if you want to follow me there, you can do that. But I am accessible. I'm available. Just let me know um, how I can support you. And if you have, I am accepting clients. If you know, uh, or if you are someone who is experiencing what we're talking about, let them know about me. Let them know that I'm here. Um, I'm a resource. I have a lot of resources. I have other people that are working on this issue and we are, we're here to help you, you know? So, yeah. So that's, that's just a little bit about where I'm, where I am and how you can find me. And yeah. Now he is accessible. I I, I do know that to be true. And uh, he does put content out, you know, consistently. So definitely give him a follow, give him a shout, make sure that, uh, Y'all stay in tune to to what he has to say in in this space. But um, we definitely going to do it again, man, because this was enjoyable. And like I said, I want us to continue this. You know, maybe if we could figure out a way to do it once a month, you know. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going, you know, I'm open to it. So um, you let me know if that kind of works for you, you know, as well. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I think we need to we need to have, spread more awareness about the topic. So we need to keep talking about it because many of us have workplace trauma and we're we're suffering in silence. So whatever we need to do to kind of get the word out about it, I'm I'm a, I'm a resource. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for coming on and I appreciate You're it. Welcome. You know, check us out on G Council at YouTube, uh social medias as well too. All right guys. Peace.